Hello everybody and welcome back to The Average. If you're new here, my name is Steph. I'm The Average Artist and no, I'm not a hoarder. I'm just an art YouTuber. I wanted to do a year review of everything I've used this year or been bought or been given or I bought myself. And I just wanted to go through my favorite supplies of the year and what I like the most and what I like the least. So I wanna start with probably the most recent, which is the pudding paint, which I really like. I've been using them a lot. And uh, I've been using these paints to create some Christmas gifts for my family. So these are for my parents. This is my gran and my niece. And then this is me as a baby with my little sis, my little sister, with my big sister. And yeah, so I use the pudding paints to make those and I really like them. I think it turned out really cute. I hope that they like them. By the time this video comes out, hopefully they would have opened them. because. It's Christmas Day, I think, when this video comes out. So Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays or Happy Commercialized Day if you don't celebrate anything <laughs> to you. Let's go with this Artist Quality Watercolor Paint. This is by Artemis Paint Studio. This was a indie purchase that I purchased myself because I really like the look of the paints. They're like a metallic watercolor and I did really like these paints. I just haven't, they haven't really been my go-to. I really like the design they've been made with like a tin with little magnets inside so you can put them in there and then carry them around quite safely. Maybe we should do some swatches just to remind ourselves in case you haven't seen these before. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these slightly out of the way because we have, we've just done a video on these so it's my last video that I've done so if you're interested in hearing more about these pudding paints then just go check that out but let's test out these beautiful watercolors again. I'm just gonna do some swatches. It comes with this little pipette as well. Super cute, little pipette, you been? And I'm just gonna pipette some water onto it because I wanna use a pipette. Super fancy. Well, actually, no, it's not that fancy, but <laughs> it is for me, okay, guys? <laughs> These paints are really nice. They're like a metallic-y. I think that's why I don't really reach for them so much is because they're kind of like a metallic-y watercolor, but also I tend to not really reach for watercolors so much anymore. I think that's something that I've really noticed about my art journey so far is when I first started YouTube, it was kind of like watercolor was my go-to. And now, not so much. I just really prefer gouache and kind of being able to use the gouache as watercolors or opaquely, which is really nice for me, I think, because I just the way I work, I like to layer a lot. And you can't really layer that much with watercolor. It's more once you put down watercolor, that's it. I do think they're really nice. They're super pigmented. If I was still into watercolors, I would have died for these. And I, I think I did buy them because I wanted to get back into watercolors and I wanted to try out um, an indie company's paint because I think, you know, with all these companies on Etsy that do create their own watercolors, I think it's really nice to be able to branch out and purchase from a small company. I think they put a lot of heart and soul into what they do and I think it shows with their product. This is definitely a really nice product and I would definitely reach for it a lot, 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 lot more if I was still into watercolor, I mean, I could use it. I could use it with some white wash and then try to like use it that way. So I could use it a bit more opaquely in the way that I like. I think once I do start using watercolor again, because I do go through phases of really liking it, because I really like the textures that you can get with watercolor. It's just not the same with gouache. I think gouache, you can layer it down and it's easier to manipulate than watercolor, for, in my opinion. So yeah, those are the, the little um, Artemis watercolor paints and I think they are really nice richly pigmented mineral paints for everyday artists so yeah this is a very nice palette and I think it was quite expensive but I think it's worth it for what you get especially being a small business super cute super handmade lovely the next watercolor palette I'm gonna go with the watercolor palette theme this time is my kids kind of jovi probably dollar store kind of watercolor paints and yes um, I think you can probably see what the quality of that is it's uh not great um you know okay for a kid not too bad not great i'm not gonna review those because what's the point point? and uh next up is my paints <coughs> what the heck are these called oh kurataki watercolor paints my sister got me these for christmas last year so sort of 
you know, in the realms of this year because I probably used them only this year. Um, this is probably the earliest art supply I got this year then. You can see they're super messy because I tend to be quite messy with art supplies and you will see that being a theme if you're new here. I'm sorry if it makes you annoyed, but that's just the way I am. I'm super a messy, messy artist, not average, messy. But yeah, I really, really like these paints. I do reach for these quite a bit actually because they're quite easy to just pick up, take the lid off, dive into. I do use them a little bit with some gouache on the side, like some white gouache every now and then. I have been doing that, especially with pieces that I just want to express myself quickly. I think that's a really good way to use these and I really like them. I think they're super pigmented and I really recommend these for anybody looking to get into watercolors. They do sell like smaller sets, which are really nice. Yeah, they come in this beautiful packaging and they're pretty simple to store. Just pop them in, pop them out. <laughs> Bish bash bosh watercolors. I think they're probably my favorite watercolors right now. So yeah, really like those. Uh, next up, I think is this one where I put my little tubes of watercolor in it. Technically, this isn't an art supply; it's a palette. But I had to give it a little mention. It is the Go Draw palette, and basically, it's for going outside and drawing and painting. So what you do is you fill up your little palettes here, and you have a little tiny china palette there, and it clicks together like that. And also you can like um, do this and then you can clip it to your sketchbook so it's really easy to just dive into and I, I really like this I need to use it a bit more often I need to go outside a bit more often I really like this company they do loads of really nice palettes they do bigger ones than this and they're all magnetic handmade wooden I really like this this is another indie company on Etsy I'll link everything down below in case you want to check it out but yeah I would definitely buy another palette from them again because it's super sturdy and I just I just put it on my light like I've got a lamp here that's metal and just stick it to it yeah pretty simple never lose it very nice next up is okay let's get over this one because if you've seen this video about these pens they claim to be color changing markers but I believe that it's just kind of a language barrier maybe or maybe they just yeah they thought saying color changing was the appropriate term but they're not, they're blacks that are slightly pigmented, metallic-y to these colours. And uh, if you want to watch a video about that disappointment, it is also on my channel. It's fairly recent and uh, the less we say about them the better. I got a lot of Culture Hustle stuff this year because if you don't know who co what Culture Hustle is, it's this uh, company by Stuart Semple who's like this well-known artist and um, I, a patron of mine gave me a lot of vouchers very very kindly to get some stuff from Culture Hustle which I get confused about the name because it always says Stuart Semple on the packaging but it doesn't say Culture Hustle anywhere but the website you buy it from is Culture Hustle, sorry for that bike in the background, which super casual here. So I've got this black which is supposed to be the blackest black in the whole world. Wasn't that blown away by it. I really find it hit and miss in Culture Hustle which is such a shame. I think it's a little bit hyped up um, for what it is. I think the packaging is beautiful. I think they do a really good job of marketing themselves and some things are better than others. For instance this unicorn milk, kind of cool. I did enjoy using that. It was quite nice. Basically it just gives like a shimmer to stuff but it's really marketed like in this milk carton which is really cute and clever and I really like that and I think yeah it does add a really nice shimmer to stuff I've rarely used this though to be honest I think I'm not really a shimmery person <laughs> if that makes sense in my artworks it tends to be not so shimmery I don't know maybe I am a bit shimmery but I don't tend to reach for it very much. As you can see, there's quite a lot left. Also, it comes with uh, this, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so it also, I've had this phase paint, which is basically like a phase pigment, and then it changes from one color to the other, and you mix it with this super base. The super base is amazing, by the way. It smells, I don't even know how to describe, like bubble gum. I don't know how they do that, but it smells really nice, and you mix pigments with it, basically, to create the paint. And it phases from like a slightly pink to a purple and yeah wasn't so keen on this one didn't think it was that amazing didn't really maybe I haven't used it right um, maybe I need to look into it a little bit more but I didn't think it was that wow uh, same with the Technicolor one which is basically quite a cute set again really nice packaging I don't know what that is <laughs> you get like this little silver bottle and then you paint on the it's basically called stick but I think it's like glue and then you take this once it's like become sticky and you put the prism powder all over and it becomes like this metallic-y thing as well which I think is quite fun quite cool makes you 
think like how could you use this in your artwork but that's another thing I tend to not reach for it because I'm like how do I use this within what I'm doing and I again I said you know, I don't really use that much shimmery stuff, so, or metallic-y stuff maybe. I should change that because I tend to get a few metallic-y things um, in the mail and stuff. But yeah, so this was sent to me by a patron, basically. I picked these out and I do like this. Maybe I'm not using the phase too correctly, but the thing I absolutely love from Stuart Semple and Culture Hustle is the glow-in-the-dark paint. I got some glow-in-the-dark paint from them before. They come as pigments, again, and you have to mix them with the super base. So this time, <coughs> I don't know what happened to my voice. This time around I got a blue and a pink. They're super glow in the dark. I just love them. I really love glow in the dark stuff and I try to use it more in my artwork, but I'm just like, how, where am I gonna use this? And uh, how do I use it in a way it makes sense? With Stuart Semple stuff, I really feel like it's probably best for like sculpture work or kind of pieces like that with like variations or stuff going on in it. And uh, I do really like the glow in the dark. I really recommend the glow in the dark. If you like to use glow in the dark in your artwork, go for it because it's very nice, very nice. Next up, I think we'll probably go with my inks. So I made these inks, that's right. I made these inks, if you... <laughs> So proud of myself. Um, if you want to check out the video of how I made these inks, I because it's a very underrated video actually. Like not many people watched it, and I really enjoyed that video, and it took me hours. Um, but basically, I go out in the wild and I try to pick up stuff that I can make inks out of, like handmade inks. So first of all, we've got the grape ink. Let's just test it on here. Still holding strong. Um, it was a little bit more pink pigmented when I first made it, which was in July. Yeah, July, so <laughs> bear that in mind. I made a clay ink, a grape ink, and a charcoal ink. And uh, also I failed to make other inks in that video. You can see my whole journey of <laughs> me trying to make ink out of shells, which uh, was never gonna work, but you know, we've gotta try these things out. So I do really like this ink. It's super not, you know, very heavy but it really dries nicely it has such a texture to it which is really really cool i really liked making these inks and the process of it i felt very close to the art like if that makes sense i felt close to the material and it was really fun to do it just to experiment and create things with stuff in my kitchen basically and uh, if you guys want to know how to make your own inks then check that video out it was very fun um, next I have these Paul Rubens soft pastels oil pastels sorry um, the problem is I don't like oil pastels so I'm probably gonna gift these to a niece of mine but they're really nice okay like for what they are the packaging the way they're designed the way they layer they are really really nice it's just that I don't use oil pastels and if you're wondering why I got these, I got sent these um, by Artex, a company who often send me stuff really nicer than thanks Artex. I'm just not into oils, basically oil pastels. I find them really hard to use. Maybe if I knew what I was doing a bit better, I would really enjoy these. But yeah, I'm probably gonna re-gift these to a family member. Um, and that's it. Uh, yeah, so those are my oils. And then lastly, but not least, probably my favorite art supply that I fell back in love with this year is the alcohol markers. So my friend um, sent me some Windsor & Newton, I believe. And basically I used them all up on my comic because I love them so much. I fell back in love with the art supply because I used to use them a lot with making comics and then I just didn't fancy using them for a while. And then Artex sent me a massive load of four massive boxes and I absolutely love these pens because they have the brush tip and there's so many different colors. They're still going strong, I'm still using them. I really, really, really enjoy alcohol markers. I think they're my favorite thing uh, to use right now, except for maybe gouache, which I'm still really enjoying. So yeah, that's basically my ratings for each product. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and having a great holiday and everything. Um, let me know if you would like to see anything, me use anything new in the new year. I'm always up for trying out different things and obviously this is an art channel so I'm obviously going to try and use different art supplies and try stuff out for you guys. And uh, 
yeah, so let me know if you'd like me to revisit any of this stuff as well. That'll be really awesome, and please give me a like and a thumbs up and all that stuff. A like and a thumbs up. There you go. Follow me and stuff. <laughs> Uh, because it really helps with the algorithm. I've spilled something here. That's annoying. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more of, of me <laughs> Please subscribe to my channel and have a great new year guys. I'll see you soon or next time Thanks again to my patrons and everybody who sent me art supplies this year. It's absolutely nuts But main reason why I have an art channel to get the free supplies. Okay. Thank you. Bye